All right, UFC 173 prediction time. Fight card taking place tomorrow. Liam Jim Grand in Las Vegas. Headlined by kind of a bullcrap um, title fight, but get to that later. Skipping the first two fights because, to be honest, out of the four fighters, the only one that I really, 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 really know is Sam Cecilia. Um, so, skipping over. Anthony Nojaquani, Vince Pichel. Quick answer, Anthony Nojaquani is my pick to win that fight. Not overly interested in it. Fox Sports 1 card, Ally Quinta, Bitch Clark taking Ally Quinta. Again, not very interested. Chris Holdsworth, Chico Camus. Um, more interested. I believe this is Holdsworth's first fight since winning the Ultimate Fighter. Yes. Yes, that is the case. Um, he has a starter test on a lot of the... Um, a lot of the uh, guys who fight, a lot of uh, Ultimate Fighter winners have in uh, Chico Camus. Um, Chico's had a pretty good run in the UFC. Um, good hands, good counter wrestling. Wins over Yetos Pisa, Kwai Ho Kang, and Dustin Pegg. I believe Kwai Ho Kang was the, the fighter that he was supposed to fight, face Holdsworth. Was. Um, then he got injured. I'm still taking Holdsworth to win. I do think that Holdsworth. Of the tough winners of recent um, seasons, is really UFC ready. Doesn't have a lot of fights, very young, but very calm, very confident in his skills. Not a lot of holes in his game. Um, stand up is, I think, does leave a few things to be desired, defensively specifically, but powerful, um, confident in it, uh, with a really good ground game. And for a guy who hasn't fought as much as he has. And of course, a good wrestling game, as is the trademark of the team Alpha Male. Taking Holdsworth by, um, I'm going to say submission. Um, Chico Camus does have a tendency to stick his neck into bad places. Um, and that could get him in trouble. Casadori Kakuno versus Tony Ferguson. Really, really a, a pretty big fan of Casadori uh, Kakuno. Um, but I just feel that Tony Ferguson brings. A lot of the things when he's on that Kakuna will struggle with. Ferguson, a lot of people have been talking about as a bust as an ultimate fighter winner. Um, he's gone three and one since winning the show, so it's hard to really say that. And his loss to Michael Johnson, who's um, had an up and down run, but pretty, you know, one that's featured some pretty good wins. Um, I'm gonna have to go with Ferguson to win this by decision. I just think that everything that Kakuno likes to do, Ferguson can shut down. And what Ferguson likes to do, I'm not entirely certain Kakuno can shut down. But I will be cheering for Kakuno. Tony Ferguson, of course, is uh, not a class act. Uh, Michael Chiesa versus Francisco Trinolo. Um, here is an ultimate fighter winner that I do believe will be somewhat of a bust of Michael Chiesa. Um, I just don't see who higher up in the list he can be. I mean, he's gotten a win over Colton Smith, who is also bust as an ultimate fighter winner. Um, Anton Koivinen, and of course, lost to um, uh, George Masvidal. The irony is, is that there are guys on that from that season that I think are going to be bigger stars than Chase. Like Derek Crookshank, Miles Jury for sure, for certain. Um, Ally Quinta is a possibility as well, I think. Um, and maybe depending on hard, how, they, how hard they push him and how hard he develops John Tuck, maybe. Um, I gotta, t I, I want to take Trinaldo. Um, I'm very high, w when he came into the UFC, I was very high on, uh, on, on Francisco Trinaldo. I was really impressed with his abilities. Coming into the UFC, of course, he had wins over guys like Adriano Martins. He had wins over Buscapi Firmino. He lost to Yuri Alcantara. That was his only loss. Um, was really, really excited. Um, but his UFC run has been um, lackluster um, at best. Losses to Gleason Tebow and Pierre Trahalman. I mean, yes, Tebow is, is a legitimate... Um, I mean, most wins, I believe, in UFC lightweight history, all those superlatives you can give to him, and a very difficult stylistic matchup for Trinaldo, 
Um, but Holman gave me some problems that I was I was surprised by, and even Jesse Ronson gave me some problems that I was surprised by. Um, I'm going to go with Michael Chase. I win by unanimous decision. It seems that these tall, seems like these tall guys who can fight tall and can bring like decent wrestling to the table have given Trinaldo some problems, and that is Michael Chiesa. Um, Jamie Varner, James Kraus, um, with as with all Varner fights, it seems. Um, it depends what it, which Jamie Varner shows up. If if we get un lack of belief, Varner, um, we'll go with that word, where he doesn't believe in himself, he will lose this fight to James Kraus. Um, he will get caught up. He'll get out. He will get picked apart on the outside. He will probably survive the fight and go to a decision. But he will lose. Um, if we get Varner, the Varner who believes in himself, the Varner who goes out there and is a killer and and, and fights smart, he will win probably via TKO or submission. Third case, if we get Varner who fights recklessly, he gets knocked out. Um, so that's the ironic three stages. Um, I'm going to go with the Varner that believes in himself and wins this fight by stoppage. But as much as Jamie Varner has all the physical tools to be a very good fighter, good hands, good power, uh, pretty, actually a surprisingly good ground game, um, something he's not given credit enough for, good wrestling both offensively and defensively. Mentally, he doesn't always put it together. And you can look at, I mean, just look at his fight record, honestly. It, it shows um, all of these options, really. Um, Gleason T. Bow is an example of a fight that he didn't seem to believe fully in himself. Uh, Melvin Clark is a fight where he did. Joe, Loz Joe Lozon is a fight where he did, but still lost. I mean, obviously, it's it's not just about believing in yourself, but, you know, came out of it. Barbosa is a fight where he fought well. Um, True Hilo is a fight where he fought reckless, got knocked out despite you know winning the fight up until that point. Hmm. Excuse me, I apologize. Uh, just woke up, still a little bit tired. Um, moving on. Uh, Takei Mizugaki versus Francisco Rivera. Uh, Rivera's got a good chance to win this fight. Um, I'm very high on Francisco Rivera and always have been very powerful hands. Um, but he lacks in certain areas. Uh, you know, his takedown defense is sometimes suspect, and people will say, well, you know, six fight winning streak, whatever. Yeah. Not a strong wrestler in the bunch. Strongest wrestler he's defeated over this five five wins and one no contest due to Van uh stripping against Roland DeLorme. Strongest wrestler is what? George Roop. Um, and not to say Mizugaki is a, a tremendously strong wrestler, but Mizugaki is a guy who's very good at transitioning strikes into takedowns and is also a very technical striker. Um, I'm taking Mizugaki to the decision. Um, that being said, Mizugaki fights have uh, largely been a really weird thing. I mean, excluding his last fight with Nam Fan, but you had Eric Perez, very close fight, Brian Caraway, very close fight. Chris Carriasso, very close fight that he should have won. Um, I, I didn't even really think it was close. I thought he should have won. Um, Carriasso got the decision somehow. Um, you know, lost to Brian Bowles. Very close fight, but, you know, legitimate loss. Ruben Duran, of course, was his famous. Um, you know, people thought Duran won the fight. Uh, I'm not going to dissuade you from it. I, I did think Mizagaki won the fight, but it was very close. Um, he, he has that tendency to just end up Whatever it is, in very, very close fights, um, even when they probably shouldn't be. Um, so we'll see what happens there. Robbie Lawler, Jake Ellenberger. Jake Ellenberger is a killer. Heavy, heavy hands. Uh, good offensive wrestling. Defensive wrestling sometimes leaves something to be desired. Um, that being said, everything he brings to the table is things that Robbie Lawler's face didn't beat. Him. You look at Robbie Lawler's. Final uh, emergence as a full mixed martial artist. He's, he's gone through phases in his career. When you look at his early UFC days, um, you know, he just had a recklessness to him, like a very 
a wild style that cost them fights against Nick Diaz to a certain extent, um, and a quick loss to Evan Tanner. Injury defeats Pratt. Um, then of course he left and you know did some fighting an icon. And then we saw kind of another side of him where you know if you came in with like good strikes that you could transition into transition into takedowns, he had a problem with you, um, or just really strong wrestling, and you know that would be a problem. Uh, Bob Lee Sprawl, Jake Shields, Mayhem Miller to a certain extent, all examples of this. Um, Jacare, um, although Jacare is badass in general. Tim uh, certainly Tim Kennedy though. Um, but now he's kind of like transitioned full circle where he's got that mix of takedown defense. He's still got that vicious power. He's still got that vicious striking. He's tightened up a lot of the technical holes that he had as a striker. I'm not going to say Ellenberger cannot win this fight because Ellenberger can win any fight at 170 because I think he can knock anyone at 170 out. Um... But when it comes down to it, I've got Robbie Lawler winning this fight. Better striker. I think he can keep it on the feet. I th um, you know, stop Johnny Hendricks' takedown. It's pretty much cold. Um, I don't see why I can't do the same to Allenberger. Um, and get right back on the title picture. Um, which is disappointing to a certain extent. As much as I do want to see a rematch between Hendricks and Allenberger. Um, or Hendricks and uh, Lawler. It would be nice to get a new face in the mix. Although I do believe Ellenberger in some ways is a flawed fighter, kind of like when people were really, really excited by him fighting Roy McDonald being going, if you really watch these two guys fight. <clears throat> Daniel Cormier, Dan Henderson. Henderson has, you know, the most well-documented puncher chance in the world. He can knock anyone out, but there is nothing else that I think he can bring to Daniel Cormier. Cormier is faster. Cormier is a better wrestler. Cormier is better with his hands. Um, Henderson uh, looked sh slow against Shogun and caught him. Um, got destroyed by Vitor Belfort. People thought he beat Rashad Evans and Leona Machida. They are smoking something, in my opinion, because... No. Um... I get it. People don't like Machida's back paddling strategy, and they don't like point fighting from Rashad Evans. I don't know what else you're supposed to exactly do against Dan Henderson. I mean, we are talking about a guy with great, you know, Olympic grade wrestling. A guy who, until Vitor Belfort smacked him, had not been finished with strikes, um, and a guy with a retardedly powerful hand. I mean, it's it's you know, it's again, it's the Fighters, to me, have the right to fight a fight that's going to win the fight um, in the rules that they are provided with. If you want to take those loopholes away, you have to change the rules. Um, and the UFC sometimes seems like they want to do that, but don't seem to really want to push for it, which is weird because you think, I mean, with boxing... Not being the draw it once was. Still a massive draw, boxing fans. Don't jump down my throat on this. But you would think that the UFC is the biggest promotion in MMA by far. Bigger than all the other ones combined, probably. Could push to get some unified roles changed. Just saying. Uh, Henan Burrow, TJ Dillashaw. Like I said, not happy with the title shot. Um, but ironically, I'm going to say some good things about it. Um... And the good things I'm going to say is I think Dillashaw actually has a better chance of Rafael Sankow beating him and Barrow. I don't think he'll win. I got Barrow winning by decision. But when it comes down to it, I thought a Sankow would, would get killed. I thought on the feet, Barrow much, much better. I didn't think a Sankow could take him down. If he did hit the ground, I think a Sankow at best could control and nullify um, Barrow. The difference is Dillashaw, faster, more creative striker has, I think, more one-punch power as well, a little bit. Um, it's not huge. But I think, you know, if he can hit Barrow, it's going to be, you know, an event for Barrow. Whereas if a Sun Cow... I didn't even think a Sun Cow could hit him. Um, I think Dillashaw can. And I think that could be interesting. But I think in the end, Barrow just better... You know, I, again, 135-pound title fights until Henan Barrow starts to show... 
kinks in his armor. He's he's beaten all the people we thought had a chance to beat him, except for Dominic Cruz, and we'll probably never see that fight. <laughs> um, why I don't like the fight, though, is just the fact that we are talking about a guy getting a title shot off of one win effectively. I mean, granted, people people thought he won the SNK fight. I didn't think he won the SNK fight. But people can think that. And But at the same time, even if you look at... Even if we say he beat a Sun Cow, um, even if, let's put it this way: if we say the Sun Cow fight was a draw or never happened, the rest of his resume is just not impressive. Hugo Viana, Issei Tamora, Von Lee, Wyatt Watson. Wyatt Watson, I know, doesn't have a job. Von Lee has a job because he's British. I'm sorry, seriously. If any other fighter, if if, an Amer if Von Lee was American, he would have been cut by now. Eh, maybe not. I guess he doesn't actually lose for, like multiple fights in a row. I take that back. You have a job, but you know it's not an impressive like title shot um, option. Issei Tamora, you know, not on the roster anymore. Uh, Hugo Viana, I believe, is, but uh, yeah, Hugo Viana, I guess, is a good one. Um, and then Mike Easton, who we were getting the title shot off of, and Mike Easton's a good fighter, but he is a fighter who's lost three fights in a row. And after a three-fight winning streak to start his run in the UFC, had the most notable win was over Ivan Menjavar, who basically beat himself. Yeah. Again, I, I have a hard time thinking that we couldn't have found something better. Um, there you go. Uh, Barada win. So, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not a terrible fight card, but it, it's not a good one. I mean, there's... Of the main card, the two most interesting fights to me are the first two. That's never the greatest side in the world. Oh well, I'll still I'll probably be at the bar watching it. <laughs>